first and foremost, it's a poorly written book. It just, it's just—it's—the it, the prose is shaky. When I say that, that the book is, is Frankenstein-esque, I don't only mean that Cummins reached for uh, tropes and sensibilities that she had no command of and then blended them and mixed them all together. The book is Frankensteinish just at a at a at a um, structural level and and at its at its at its level of like lexicon and syntax. It's just it's it's sloppy. Um, and then uh, to add to that, the folks represented by the book, the brown folks in the book are paper dolls. They're paper dolls that are there in order to advance a plot and in order to um, advance an allegory. And that allegory is United States of America, good, Mexico, bad. And Mexico isn't even Mexico. Mexico is anything south of the U.S. border, as far as this book is concerned. Everybody brown sort of flattens into one faceless mass. There was a major protest outside the offices of Flatiron Books, which is owned by Macmillan, on Monday. Um, you all, uh, Miriam and uh, Roberto, had a meeting. Uh, can you describe this meeting on Monday? And one of the claims was that the the publisher canceled the book tour uh, for Cummins because she was receiving death threats. What did you find out in the meeting? Well, we found out that the Latino community in the United States is capable of exerting its voice and its power to enter the national dialogue that we've been excluded from through most of the history of the United States. This was a historic victory with material and political and cultural effects. And um, there's no precedent when you have f 13 people in a room, the top executives, not just a flat iron, but Macmillan, one of the most powerful publishing entities in the world, coming to meet with the leader of this movement that is this five foot uh, school teacher, a little taller with her heels, but uh, who, Miriam, who, <laughs> who, who sparked all of our imaginations. To, to, to act on this. And so I was moved by that, and I decided, along with our other colleague, David Bowles, who, who, who requires mention here, to, to, to launch Dignidad Literaria, to, to, to elevate the dignity. I think what you're seeing is nothing less than the decline and fall of the, what I call the folklorico industrial complex of U.S. Latino literature. I think the cartoonish images of Latinos in the United States are starting. To, 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 to be dead. And I think the guarantors of that, you can find them on hashtag Dignidad Literaria. And so, during the meeting, uh, which had moments of tension and moments of agreement, we actually, you know, wrote out a, a, a collective, uh, an agreement, basically. And let me—if I may read it. Uh, that would substantially increase increasing Latinx representation across Macmillan, including authors, titles, staff, and its overall ecosystem. Now, um, this has never happened in the annals of U.S. Latino literature. This is what you've agreed to. This is Macmillan. what's been agreed to, in addition to developing an action plan to address these objectives within 90 days and to regroup within 30 days with Dignidad Literaria and other Latinx groups to assess progress. And so we were in the room with some very serious executives who very much noticed the explosion of the Latino community and in brilliant critique like Miriam's and David's and others, and also in action, because a lot of us never learn to make the, dis the artificial distinction between, say, poetry and politics. A lot of us are poet warriors, let's say, and so uh, we, 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 we went in and we came out with a, with a success that's measurable and that will be held accountable by the Latino community, who are the ultimate guarantors of this.